G'day, welcome to Torah Tuesday. Uh, we have reached a, a funny, a comedy episode of Abraham's life this week. Uh, we left Abraham last week and he had just had a child uh, with his wife's slave, Hagar. Uh, he gave, he, Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. And now we read in chapter 17 that Ishmael is 13 years old. So 13 years have passed. Abraham is 99 years old and he still does not have the son that God has promised to him, the, the promised son, the heir. And then God comes to him, and this is where it gets really funny, at 99 years of age without an heir. And he says, Abraham, I'm going to change your name to Abraham, which means the father of many. God is having a good laugh to himself at this point. And God goes on in his humor uh, to confirm this promise that you will be the father of many. I want you to uh, circumcise yourself. Now, let's just be a little bit graphic for a moment here. Abraham, Abraham you're a 99 year old man and I want you to reproduce but before you do, just to confirm the promise, I would like you to cut the top of your reproduction organ off. Uh, the comedy continues. <laughs> um, God goes on with the jokes. It's your 90-year-old wife who will be the mother of this new child. You should change her name from Sarai to Sarah because she will give birth to a son. And she will become the mother of nations and kings will come from her. And this is the point where Abraham starts to laugh out loud uh, because he sees that this is just a big fat joke. It says, Abraham fell down, fell face down. He laughed to himself and he said to himself, will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And God replies to him by saying, Yes, your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac, which means laughter. So God is very aware that this is all big fat joke, isn't he? He says that the name of this child is going to be laughter, because this is all a big joke. Now, it seems like Abram didn't share these jokes with Sarah uh, maybe he didn't find them all that funny because in the next chapter we actually read that Sarah hears about them from these three men who are visiting Abraham's tents. Uh, one of them said to Abraham, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abram, Abraham and Sarah were already very old. And Sarah was well past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself. And she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? The pleasure of raising children, that is. And then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? <clears throat> I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Now it says Sarah was afraid, and she, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But God replied and said, yes, you did laugh. So it's Comedy Central in these chapters today, chapters 17 and 18. Um, I, I recognize I'm not talking about um, the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, but... I do appreciate this, this brief comedic interlude in the story. But the point is very clear in all of these jokes. The promise of God to Abraham is completely against the natural course of things. Remember all the way back to Genesis 12. God has chosen a barren elderly couple to be the starting point for a nation. That's a pretty bad place to start. And then he waits numerous years before he reaffirms the promise of children. So they were already elderly, they were already barren, and God waited numerous years before he reaffirmed the promise in chapter 16. And then Abraham and Sarah, they take matters into their own hands and they try to create an heir with Ishmael. 
but God rejects that plan. <clears throat> and he takes another 13 years in chapter 17 um, just to really put to death any hope of, of natural childbirth. Um, and then he reiterates the promise again. He changes Abram's name to Abraham and says, you are going to be the father of many. But he says at the same point, he says, Abram, first I want you to cut the top of your penis off as a sign of your covenant to me. Now, if you don't really get it, I'm trying to make it very clear, this is all a big fat joke. This is all very laughable. And I don't mean to spoil the story, but you probably already know that God comes through on this promise. And Isaac is born, and God gets the last laugh. God always gets the last laugh. Honestly, how often do God's promises to humanity seem laughable in the face of bleak reality? Honestly, think about it. Christians are often the laughing stock of the media, the newspapers, um, the television shows. We're often the laughing stock of our friends. Our families have a good cackle at the things that we all them hold out for hope in. But the message of this story is quite clear. God will always get the last laugh. No matter how ridiculous it might seem for God's promises to be fulfilled, God always keeps his promises. God always gets the last laugh. Let that firm you up in the promises of God this week. See ya.